Welcome to Coffee with the Googler. Today I'm chatting with Jen Parson, who has been the face of cloud functions for Firebase for some time. Hey, how's it going, Firebase developers? Install the Google Cloud Storage module. Name is its path in storage. I'll log the event and then return. Uh, Jen's here today to talk about this and also a couple of nice big announcements that she has for us. Welcome, Jen. Thanks, happy to be here, Lawrence. So you've been working Cloud Functions for Firebase. Can you tell us all about it? Uh, sure, so I have made some content around Cloud Functions for Firebase. Um, it runs serverless in the back end, mm -hmm. and so that enables you to run code that you wouldn't necessarily want your client to have access to. Right. And uh, prior to working on Cloud Functions for Firebase, I hadn't worked with that kind of trigger before. And I really loved that um, it was so easy to learn. Mm. So at first mm. I was like, I thought, you know, a lot of this is stuff that I could do myself already. You know, an iOS developer, I could do a lot of this from the client. But then right. um, I realized that it was definitely worthwhile to learn Cloud Functions for Firebase, even though I wasn't that familiar with uh yeah. JavaScript before now. Oh. Okay. And I mean, one of the magic things of Firebase when we first launched, it was like all this stuff that you can do in the client without having all of these tiers and managing these tiers like for simple things like data reads and writes. But we've learned over time that, of course, people still need to have code running in the back end. Yes, that's true. We still need some things running on the back end, but uh, Firebase is still taking a lot of that work out of it for us. Okay. So it scales up and down the service for you, so you don't have to worry about managing that yourself. And, and you don't have to worry about managing specific servers, right? Right, exactly. You know, FTP to this one to deploy code and FTP to that one to deploy code, like in the bad old days. You just push it into Firebase and it does the rest. It just works. And now uh, Functions works off a concept called triggers. Right? Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? What sure. You think? So a lot of times you're going to run a, run some code in response to something that happened, probably client side, or mm -hmm. it could be something like a, a write to the database, or adding something to storage, um, authenticating a new user, uh, maybe some sort of important analytics event, or right. uh, maybe HTTP or PubSub, something that normally happens in your app and you want to run some snippet of code every time. Uh, right. The code is triggered. Um, based on that event. And that was a perception change that I had to make. And it was like, I, I didn't get functions at first. And I watched some of your videos and then suddenly it just dawned on me that, because to me, like, you know, backend code would always be, I have to make a call and it would execute something. And I might have a cron job that does it occasionally, or it's just something to respond to users. But now it's like a field in the database changes and then code will execute. Or, you know, an auth event happens and code will execute. It's like, right, it's exactly. really cool. Yeah, and there are a lot of great samples of this on our GitHub functions samples. And it's great to uh, check it out and try it for yourself because if you're not sure what it can do, there are a lot of options out there to um, try out. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's a code lab as well for the friendly chats, and there's some there's some functions have been added to that. Are you, have you seen them? Uh, yeah, actually, and it also uses machine learning as well, so you can really see how uh, Cloud Functions works with all sorts of um, other code that you'd want to use in your apps. Right, there's one really neat function in there that like because friendly chats for a chat room, and then sometimes people upload bad pictures to chat rooms. And so what it does is it uses a cloud function to call our cloud services to see if this content is objectionable. And then if it is, it like blurs the image. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it's really, it's one of my favorites. Whenever I demo, I like to show that one. I show them the blurred image and ask them <laughs> to guess what it is. <laughs> you know, you'll have to watch some of the videos to see for yourself. So cloud functions, you've been doing a fabulous job on this. And Thank you. you weren't even a full-time Googler when you were doing it. Guilty. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I hope this isn't seen too much as an empty compliment, but I was really surprised when I found out that you'd become a Googler because I thought you were one all along. Well, thank you. you know, which is great. So. Um, yeah, I had been a vendor, so working for a third party at Google for mm -hmm. uh, a little over a year. Right. And uh, actually, this is my second day working as a Googler. Always the joke when somebody's on their second day of a job is like, you came back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how's it been? How's the, the, the second full day of work been? Um, it feels great. Um, <laughs> You know, it's such a welcoming community anyway. I always felt like I belonged as well. So in a lot of ways, it feels like business as usual, yeah. but it's nice to have the title. Yep. It's um, good that you mentioned community because you're going to be doing some community work in the coming months, right? Some conferences you're speaking at. Uh, yes, I'm going to a couple of conferences soon. I'm going to Google Developer Days Europe, which is going to be in Krakow, Poland. Nice. I'm going to be doing a talk on app growth and app quality. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'd love people to check it out, showing some cool Firebase features. It's got a great story. 
and um, I'm especially interested in seeing other female developers come okay. out. I'd love to communicate with them and see what they're working on. Sure. I mean, it's been a tough time for women recently in Silicon Valley, so it's great to have women up front speaking and women talking about cutting-edge stuff the way that you have. So, you know, if you're watching this video and you're a woman in tech, you know, please, please come along to our conferences. You're very, very welcome, and we'd just be delighted to have you there. And when we have folks like Jennifer up front speaking, I th hopefully it's, uh, it's, she's been an inspiration to many of us here, and hopefully she will be to you too. So um, as well as the Poland one, you're also going to be speaking at the Firebase Summit? I am going right? to be speaking at the Firebase Summit. Can you um, give us a hint on what it will be? It's definitely a favorite talk. People really enjoy it. <laughs> no spoilers? No spoilers. This is like Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is going to be at the end of October, right? Yes. Um, cool. So... Um, you're going to be there. The whole Firebase team is going to be there. All of us are going to be there. You know, we're going to do a bunch of talks. I'm not allowed to talk about my talk either yet, but we'll be there um, answering questions on stage, and the whole thing's going to be on video as well, So, which is great. So thanks very much, Jennifer, for coming. Uh, thanks for being on this show. Thanks it's, for having me. I know it's day two, and you're supposed to be doing your orientation, but we dragged you out to, to put you in the studio, so I appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. And if you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Jennifer, just please leave them in the comments below. We would love to see you at our events, particularly the two that are coming up. But um, you're always welcome at any Google events. Thanks so much. It's going to be fun in Poland. I can't I wish wait. I could be there.